Hello, here is a short video, number seven, speaking about uh, annuity due or how to handle time shifts with annuities. So we'll start out by showing the solution to the practice problem from the last video. And I have here the uh, question and, uh, and some things identified. So let's go ahead and go through that. Suppose you were to make an annual contribution to your new Roth IRA, uh, $5,000 amount every year at the end of each year, end of each year for five years. So that would be N. If your account grows at 6% annually, so that would be the interest rate, how much would be in the account at the end of five years? So it's basically asking you to find the future value of that series of cash flows. It's a regular annuity. The payments happen at the end of each year. So requirement number one, draw a cash flow diagram. And here it is. Now you can draw the, the arrows going down because it is um, a, deposit, a cash outflow for you, a deposit into an account. And then the future amount I've driven as a cash flow coming back into you, so an up arrow. Payments happen at the end of each year, interest rate of 6%. So again, identify our knowns and unknowns. Annuity is $5,000, interest rate is 6%, number of years, N is five, and find F, that's the unknown. So select appropriate equation or table value and solve. I've used the table value, the interest tables. Solve for F, $5,000 annuity times a factor in the 6% interest table for five years on the five year row in the find F given a column. Multiply it by the amount of the one annuity payment, 5,000. So there's a factor, 5.6371. And so the answer is $28,185.46 is the future value of this stream of $5,000 deposits growing at 6% per year. The ending balance in that account would be $28,185. All right, so that is a good practice problem. So that's a regular annuity when the payments happen at the end of each year. Let's look now at some, when the payments happen at the beginning of each year, it's called an annuity due. So here's the exact same cash flow series we just looked at, the payments happening at the end of each year. The annuity due, I've just shifted all the payments over one year earlier. So our initial deposit into the account happens at time zero and we still make five deposits. So N is still five. And there's no deposit at the end of year five. All five deposits happen at the beginning of the year. So basically each payment has shifted to one year earlier. Therefore, each payment needs to be compounded for one extra year, right? So if we've already solved the problem the other way, we can solve the, you know, with a regular annuity with payments happening at the end of the year. We've already solved it and found the future balance was 28,185. So if we already have that, we can just compound the entire amount by one extra year by multiplying it by one plus the interest rate to come up with the new ending balance of 29,876 and a little bit of change. It makes sense that this is a little bit higher than the a regular annuity value because every payment has been in the account and being compounded at 6% interest for one additional year. So that makes sense, it's a little bit more money. Another way to approach that is to take the answer that we came up with, the future value under the regular annuity, subtract the initial $5,000 payment. No, I'm sorry, subtract, I'm sorry, subtract the last $5,000 payment and add on the first $5,000 payment, which grows at 6% for five years. In the, the find that factor in the find F given P column of the 6% interest table. So we can do that and come up with the same 29,876.59. If you wanna do this in Excel, here's the formula for an annuity due in Excel, this is what you would enter into the cell for this example. And the general form, I think it looks like this, equals future value FV, parentheses, the interest rate, the number of payments, 
the dollar amount of one payment, and then the time shift, how far you're going back in time just one year to go from annuity to annuity due. So you might try that with in Excel with some different scenarios and uh, see what values you get returned if it makes sense to you using the, the same formula as we've spoken about earlier. Okay, short video, that's it for today. Thanks, bye.